Hey folks, uh, we're going to engrave a QR code and it's going to look something like this. Uh, welcome to the channel. I'm Dave. Uh, so we're going to start by going up to tools. And down in the selections, you'll find create barcode. Now prior to uh, version 1.7, uh, this would have said something like create QR code. Now we know a QR code is just a two-dimensional barcode uh, and your standard barcodes that you see in the grocery store and on inventory uh, items, then those would be one-dimensional. So you can do both, <clears throat> excuse me, but prior to 1.7, uh, you were kind of limited to QR unless you downloaded an additional font or other fonts that you could import into Liveburn. Uh, and now you can pretty much do whatever kind of barcode you like. We're going to take a look at that. So click, you'll get this little icon, and you can just drag out the barcode to whatever size you want. You get this drop down here. And with QR codes, you have three choices, I believe. You have the standard, you have a micro, and then you have a mini. So we're going to do this standard one. Uh, but before we get to that, you have three tabs here. Uh, raw content is if you have something like a website, which is what we're going to do. We'll do a website. Uh, that'll take us to the information, uh, directly to the information that Lightburn has posted for this topic. Uh, but if you go to, uh, you can, I've I done one for my Wi-Fi the other day because people come in and uh, they ask for the password all the time and you have to, have to look it up. Well, uh, now I've got some QR codes laying around. Uh, you just put your, your network name up top and your password here. And you can put, uh, you put your network authentication type, which is most likely WPA, WPA2. Uh, and then you have one for contact information if you're doing business cards. But even if you use the second two tabs, it's going to make its way over to the raw content tab. So for this particular QR code, we have a limit of 4,000. Uh, characters we won't need that many so we're just going to go grab a website this is from the 1.7 documentation and we're just going to grab that link copy and just drop it in here right click and paste and you can see the QR code changes in real time so down below for this text evaluation, uh, normal is where you would want it to be for this. Now, if you were doing some kind of inventory management system, I'm, I'm going to save this one and then we'll come back and do another one. So let me click OK. Click the selector tool. I'm just going to pull this out of the way for a minute. And that's the one we'll burn. But let's go back and look again. Go to Tools, Create. We'll drag another one out. It's going to default to QR just because that's what I had it on. But let's say you had an inventory system you were working on. You're trying to keep track of the stuff you're selling on Etsy or something, and you wanted to make uh, tags for that. <clears throat> Probably code 28 would be the most used uh, type of barcode that's one-dimensional. Uh, of course, you're, you may be more familiar with uh, the UPC codes you see in grocery stores. And those are in here as well. But we'll probably get an error. Yep, just like that. Uh, it's looking for a specific set of information. And if you know what that is, you're good. If not, you're going to get this X. But if we went... Uh, let's take a quick look at this code 128. If you had an inventory system and you were just had your numbers for your items, then uh, that's all you would need. You could set this up and you could scan it. Uh, now, I'm going to double click to edit. You can also right click and edit, but 
back down here to this text evaluation. If you went to the drop down, you could use the variable text mode and you could import uh, a merged CSV file that had uh, all of your inventory locations on it. So uh, you can work with this, figure out what works best for you. But for now, we're just going to burn this QR code. And to know that it works, I'm going to delete this one. If you want to test that it works, you can pause the video. Scan that with your phone camera. Uh, and it should take you directly to the, uh, the website we just looked at. That is the 1.7 uh, documentation for barcodes. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, uh, let me see what size this is. I don't want to use a whole sheet of wood. Uh, I'm going to click inches real quick. I'm going to make it a little smaller. Just so I don't waste some wood. And. Okay. But if you scan that. You should go right to that website. Alright. I'm going to jump in the laser. We'll burn this. See what it looks like. And uh, I will be right back. Okay. So we're set up. I'm using 5 millimeter Luan plywood. Uh, 40 watt laser, 80 millimeters per second at 20% power. So uh, let's send this code on over and see what it looks like. All right, let me clean this up just a little bit, and we'll take a closer look at it. Okay, so there's our finished product. Uh, I just uh, sanded it off a little bit. Uh, you, can, you can test that with your phone now, but uh, it works, and it shows how easy it is to do uh, QR codes and barcodes in general, uh, thanks to the smart folks at Lightburn. So uh, there's a lot you can do with this. And I certainly don't know everything there is to know about it. Uh, but you can research the uh, barcode types. And depending on what you're trying to do, you can find the one that uh, best suits that. So uh, if you have questions, please ask them. Um, you folks asking questions, it, it really helps me to learn because uh, sometimes I get questions about things I've never even thought of. In fact, most of the time. So I appreciate it. So uh, ask any questions you got. Uh, I appreciate the comments. I appreciate you watching. And if it was helpful, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And it keeps me out here in the shop making videos. And that's what I like to do. So uh, just check back often for new videos. You folks take care. And we'll see y'all next time. Thank you.